I'm about to bono the shit out of this set. <laughs> with or without you, <laughs> with or without you, my audience, but mostly without you, I can't laugh with or without you. Yeah. I always wonder when uh, lawyers do work pro bono, you know, why do they always do it free? Because you'd think he'd have enough money to pay for it himself. <laughs> you know, the secret about comedy is timing. Because if I'd come here tomorrow, you all wouldn't be here, and then nobody would be here to laugh at me. But Bono did something about timing, you know, back in the 80s, when he was all about Africa. You know, and he says, you know, so many children die in Africa every couple of seconds. So basically, whenever I click my fingers, a child in Africa dies. Well, stop clicking your fucking fingers then, Bono. <laughs> but that's enough of that. Um, I think you can probably tell by my accent that I'm not originally from the area. That's right, I'm from Murray, just down the road. <laughs> you know, you might think that uh, I'm such a great U2 impersonator that I'd be pretty happy with my life, but unfortunately, no. But I did get a promotion at work today, so that's worth a round of applause. Yeah. Thank you. I'm now the Grand Master of the Child Sex Club. But not that one. The one that meets in the basement of the temple on Sunday afternoons. <laughs> but, you know, I am pretty depressed. You know, any day now, you're probably going to find me unconscious on the bathroom floor next to an empty bottle of vitamin C. <laughs> but I know it's going to take a lot of vitamin C to kill me, so that's probably why I'm going to use Airborne. <laughs> but I do understand that, you know, I do need to do something about my mental health. So I've thought about it, you know, maybe, maybe I'll get myself a girlfriend, you know, because it's always good to have some love, have a bit of sex, you know, feel good about yourself. I used to be married, and I thought the most romantic thing would be to, you know, save up all my belly button fluff so that I could get enough so I could stuff an entire Build-A-Bear from Build-A-Bear Workshop and present it to her. <laughs> but unfortunately, didn't, she, she didn't share the sentiment. So, you know, I am on the look. I am on the look for a girl. Um, but it's hard to find a girl these days, you know. Don't get me wrong, I'm not going to pay for it. Never have, never will. But I do go to prostitutes. But as soon as the deed's done, I always jump out the window and run away. <laughs> so I thought, you know, maybe Americans love their comfort food. So maybe I'll say that. So I went to Kentucky Fried Chicken. And that just made me even more sad because the poor little chicken wings, you know, that were raised in a cage that I just had to eat for 10 cents. And that just made me even more depressed. So I thought, well, maybe I'll, um, I'll try and expand my mind. So I've been reading a lot of Ge National Geographic. And apparently, the panda, the panda's natural prey is the penguin, which is a terrible case of black on white, black on white violence. <laughs> but speaking of racism, Martin Luther King had two dreams that night. And perhaps if he told the one about the giraffe riding the unicycle, he might not have got shot. Because I have a dream about a giraffe riding a unicycle. And if we can all work together like the brown and yellow and white spots on the giraffe's back and ride that unicycle together. See, it wasn't really racism, but... <laughs> so then I thought, you know, maybe, maybe I'll find myself a higher power. You know, maybe God is my answer. So I started reading the Bible, and I thought to myself, you know, if only Jesus had some cheese that day he tried to feed the 5,000, because he already had some fish and he had some bread, and if he'd had some cheese, he would have invented the filet of fish and had a billion followers right there and then. So, but I got my accent, you know, I'll talk to you quickly about a small word called crack. You know, it's spelled C-R-A-I-C. It's a Gaelic word, which means good times, good fun. And unfortunately, the way we use it is you say, have you any crack? And you say, yeah, actually, I had some good crack last night, which doesn't work too well when you're in the TSA line. And they say, are you here for business or pleasure? And you go, well, I'm here for the crack, actually. <laughs> you know, mostly get rubber starfished and I'm not walking right for three weeks. 
But I was in a, I was in a restaurant the other day, and somebody moved their chair, and it made that, that terrible noise, you know, that <laughs> noise. And I thought to myself, what would it be if that's what Moroni sounded like? Because nobody moved. And if Moroni's trumpet, we all know who Moroni is up in the temple when he plays his trumpet. And I just thought, you know, how terrible would it be if, if nobody actually recognized and it didn't sound like an angel? So. <laughs> and if he plays and nobody goes, then the rapture happens and nobody goes. He'd have to spend his days in the post-apocalyptic world, you know, doing Moroni plays 80s theme tunes, like the A-Team. But that's my time. Thank you. Brian Higgins. <laughs>